Okay, so for this tutorial, uh, we're just going to go real briefly over sound and um, face effects. So, what we're going to do first thing real quick is um, we're going to go and make a new matinee sequence. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to teach you about a new group called the director group. So you right click and click director group. Now, there's a lot of stuff that this can do, and uh, it's coming up soon. It's going to go over cameras as well, um, but that, that's not going to be in this tutorial. It's going to be coming up. So first thing we're going to do to teach you about sounds is we're going to right click on this uh, director group, and we're going to go to um, soundtrack, new soundtrack. So you can also add that to any other type of group also. So even if you have like a light or something like that, uh, I'm not going to name this because we're just going to do it real quick, you know. Um, even then, you can still add a sound group, uh, and it does the exact same thing. But uh, in this case, you really don't want to do that. You just want to uh, add it to the director group. So we're going to go to the generic browser here, and what we're going to look for, more specifically, is a sound cue. We can't look for a sound wave because that's not the same thing. We need to find just a sound cue. So we can either go search through for one, or we can um, you can do this for any of these different types of things here. But you can just check this little box here. And if this is unchecked, then all that it's going to show you are sound cues. So there's a turret loop there, for example. Um, let's find a good one here. There's Hellbender turret fire. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's go for that one. Um, so once you have it selected in the generic browser, remember you click it once, exit out. Then you can come over and add it in. Now listen to this. And there it is. Now I don't know how well you can actually hear it, um, but we'll we'll see how it goes here. Uh, now there's a few ways you can manipulate this as well. Uh, if you right-click on it, you can set the time just like you always can. Uh, interp mode really doesn't matter too much right now, but you can set the sound volume so you can set it like lower by setting it to a decimal. See now it's really quiet. You can also set it louder. It only goes up to a certain point though. So, oops, for the most part though, you're just, uh, pretty much you want to set it somewhere between 0 and 1, and try to get all your sounds to uh, match and um, loudness this pretty closely. Otherwise, you know, uh, this is basically just so that, like, you know, if you have a character talking, and then you have a, a gun firing at the same time, and you want one to be louder than the, than the other, you can have one kind of, you know, quiet down a little bit so that you can hear them both, you know, well, or hear one better than the other one. So I've set the volume back down to 1. So now you can also set pitch. And pitch is just basically uh, how, it effectively it's how, um, you know, high pitch or low pitch it is. So you'll see what I mean. Here's at 1. Now here's, oop, I'm sorry, I just did volume. Now here's at, uh, let's go 2. And you can hear it's a different sound. You can also go less. So then you can also, uh, you know, like I said, you can set it back down to one, and that's that's what it normally is. I think you can actually set it to pretty high values too. Yeah. Um, let's go point one. See. See, and it comes out pretty neat. Um, th the thing that you need to notice though is that when you change pitch, it also changes how long it lasts. So, normally, when you have this set at 1, as soon as it gets to that line there, the end of the sound cue, that's the end of it. It's all done. When you change the pitch to something higher, it gets done sooner, because it's basically speeding up the sound file. And now it's done. So I set it to twice the speed, it goes half the length. Same then, if I set it to 0.5, which is half, And now it's done. So you can see it, it's pretty nice, but you have to really, you know, you have to use it wisely. Um, now the other thing I want to show you while I'm still in here is I'll go ahead and exit out of this for now. Now go back into the generic browser and deselect sound cue and select skeletal mesh instead. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new um, a new package, and uh, this is near Unreal Tournament 3 uh, folder. UT game, cooked package, and then characters. And what we're looking for right now is one of the Twin Souls 
sign packages. And I guess it's the only actual sign package. So let's go with that one. And just click OK. Uh, it's missing some files, but it's always like that. So don't worry about it for uh, for this one. Now we're going to pick Reaper uh, just because uh, that that's for the most part, um, you know, OK, well, it has a, it, if you go and look, this is how you can tell whether you can use face effects with it. This is what we're doing right now, face effects. Okay, you remember I showed you how to see bones before? Bone names? You can see how many bones he has in the face. Uh, the normal skeleton only has one bone for the whole head. And then one bone for the neck. You know, you get the idea. Uh, this one has lots and lots of bones for the face. And then you can see, same with, um, with Othello here. Tons and tons of bones for the face. And then same with uh, Jester. And this is Bishop. And he never comes with the right material on his head. So you can still go and make your own, or you can go and uh, find his actual material and you know fix it up so you can use that. Uh, but he also has the bones on his face. So let's go ahead and add Reaper Offset. And we'll just add him someplace here. It doesn't really matter too much where. Uh, just like before, add Skeletal Mesh. He'll come in halfway below the floor here. Raise him up. It doesn't really matter if he's on the ground right now or not. Uh, let's go to Properties. Uh, properties, probably, there it is. Um, skeletal mesh, light environment component. Then go back to lighting. Uh, click on him first. There he is with full lighting. We'll go ahead and uh, I forgot no BSP or uh, static lighting for him. Now, uh, oh, and the other thing you got to remember: uh, movement to interpolating. Right. Okay. Now let's go back into that one we just made. Uh, now we need to add Reaper back in. It doesn't really matter what you name it, but there it is. Right click on him, and we want to go to Face Effects Track. Now he doesn't have a Face Effects uh, file right now, so you click the little plus, go to, back to your generic browser. We can go look for actual uh, Face Effects and um sets. And now we have a bunch of different ones. And you can also go to Assets, and then I'll show you uh, the actual. See, these are basically the uh, face effects editors, which, again, they never have all the files, but uh, in some tutorial later on, I'll maybe get around to doing this, but uh, this is how you go and edit the face effects. But anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and add uh, Reaper Sign Malcolm Betrayal. Let's try that one out. There it is. Make sure it comes in there correctly. Now you can add it just like a normal keyframe by pressing enter. And let's see Dizzy, just because Dizzy is always interesting. Uh, so I'll zoom in on his face a bit here so you can kind of see what's going on. I'll deselect him just so that you can uh, actually see it a little bit better. Now look at this. Okay, our sound played just like normal. And there's the face effects uh, playing. So I'm going to extend this just a little bit. And I'm actually going to add a different one where he actually says something, and I'll add it after the sound file. Uh, there's some pretty interesting ones here, so... And sometimes they these have sound files attached to them. Sometimes they don't, just because the way that they made the game, basically. Let's end it. See, and there he is. Let's end it. So, and that's all there is to adding uh, face effects. So there's also uh, there's a uh, like scream. This is pretty entertaining, I think. Even though he doesn't actually say anything. Uh, I'm gonna add this. Then I think this will pretty much wrap up the sound of the face effects tutorial. Now it doesn't get any better than that. Did you see that? <laughs> Let's see that again here, real quick. Okay. Uh, good enough. So, and that's really all there is to sound and face effects. Now let's make sure we save again. And uh, like I said, that's that's as far as it goes, you know. Um, so you can, always, of course, you can combine that with animations also. And I would show you that, but you know, it's the exact same way. Oh, I'll go and show you, I guess. Uh, I'm sorry, I know I do that a lot, but, you know, you just go uh, click on Reaper, and then you would go and find an animation set, and again, you can go select one up here, and I'll deselect all these other things, so that I can uh, find a good one here. I could do Anim uh, Hero Base, it's always entertaining. So now, while he does this, you can also say, okay, now do a Ground Pound A. So now... And on top of whatever animation he's doing, uh, he does his face effects animation. 
and that's part of his properties. Uh, if you go and look, uh, now I'll kind of dig myself into a hole. I think no, no, here it is. Okay, uh, face effects blend. You can uh, set whether you want them to add together or if you want one to just go over the other one. So, and that should do it now for this tutorial. And again, I'll save one more time. Uh, so next will be particle effects. So I'll get to that in a few.